seem like you're ready for like, the winter. How's it going guys? So for this series of videos for doing the fence, we're gonna do kind of more of like a vlog style uh, just because we're not so kind of hectic with doing stuff so I can spend a little bit more time video editing. But well, we got High Carb Hannah. She seems to be ready for the Minnesota winter, even though it'll probably be in the 60s here today. It's cold. In Southern. It is It is a little nippy, right? And I know some of you guys around the, around the world will be cursing us. It's not that cold. It's cold here. We're used to like 80, 90, and it's like in the 60s, so. <laughs> so we're gonna be working on getting a fence around our little area here. Um, main purpose for that is to keep the dogs in and to keep the... Uh, coyotes the, out. Keep the coyotes out, keep the snakes out. Keep and the little bunnies that eat all my freaking vegetables out. Yeah, try to keep some of the, uh, the, the wild animals out of here just so that we have our own little safe zone. Because like, we have seen multiple times there's coyotes just, you know, walking down our driveway, just minding their own business. And uh, we just don't want to see Bubba and Dewey get eaten. And when, the, and when they're outside, we're going to be outside with them. That's a rule that we're making uh, just because, you know, coyotes could possibly jump over the fence. But um, because there is a fence, they're much less likely to do that. So it's going to be about a five foot fence. We're going to be drilling, I think, about 26 or 27 holes. And we're going to be using six by six posts that are those big brown ones over there, I don't think you can see them. And we're going to be setting those up. And uh, we rented a little hole digger from Home Depot. Auger? Auger. It's like an ice digger. auger. Yeah, exactly. It's like what you use for ice fishing. So we're going to get, so hopefully it won't take too long to get these holes dug out and it'll save our back having this hole digger. All right, so we got it. <laughs> All right, so we got the hole digger on and uh, we did mark auger. out. All right, we got the auger on. We did mark out exactly where all the fence posts are gonna go yesterday. We just measured everything out with a, with a line and should be good. I think we're only gonna dig these about two, two and a half feet deep, but we'll just go deeper because you can always add stuff in and it's harder to dig it out. Whoa, mother. See how much friction that is? Doug. 
So these are the 6x6 six six, uh, pressure treated posts that we're going to be using. These are the 4x4 four four posts that we're going to use uh, for the awning. So we dug the holes for the awning as well. Um, you can see that we've been you know, working on the patio. I still have to finish it off uh, with the paver, uh, the paver set there. But we are making lots of headway here. This is going to be our front gate, so it's a nice 10 foot gate. So we shouldn't have any issues getting in and out based on the size. So I'm going to get the trailer hitched back onto the Jeep, get the hole digger in the trailer, take it back uh, to Home Depot. Um, I just did a 24 hour rental, so I actually picked it up last night. And so I just have to get it back there before 5 o'clock today. So it certainly saved our backs from doing a lot of digging there. And uh, our neighbor actually has uh, one of those hole diggers like that. So we'll probably use that in combination with the shovel just to kind of clean it out. And um, yeah, let's get going. I'm Eric Pritz here on Beats One. Back at Home Depot, we'll return that, and then we're gonna go home and have a little chat. All right, so we got some more four by fours, pressure treated. So this was a much better way of tying everything down. The other way was just not working, but check out this beautiful sunset over the mountains over there. Oh yeah. It's actually really pretty out here, despite that everything looks like it's totally dead right now. All right, sunglasses are coming off. Serious talk here. All right, so I got a really good question yesterday from Amy D. Um, she asked, can you guys talk more about why you, why you decided to settle for now in Arizona? Why not an area more lush? Would love to hear. So Hannah and I originally moved down to Tucson just so that it was gonna be like a temporary stop for like six months and we we're gonna move to California. And we just ended up really enjoying Tucson like we just thought it was like a really cool place the mountains there are absolutely beautiful and it, like it really grew on us like I, I wouldn't like I grew up in Canada so coming to a place like this it's totally different than what I'm used to but the things that we really 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 love about southern Arizona we love the weather so the climate here it's very comfortable uh, for most of the year it does get really hot in the summer and we did have some 115 Fahrenheit days in Tucson um, and those were really hot especially when I was working on the tiny house but other than that we would choose 115 Fahrenheit day over a day where it's like minus 20 or minus 30 degrees Celsius um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit maybe it's like zero Fahrenheit or something like that so really really cold so we oh so personally we'd always choose um, warmer weather over colder weather because at least in 110, 115, you can still go outside and you can still do stuff. It, it might not be the most comfortable, but you can still go out and do it. Something else that is really nice about Southern Arizona is that um, it's really cheap to live here. So if you go live in Tucson, you can get apartments for really cheap. Um, the land values out here, very inexpensive. Um, to buy compared to places like California. Um, I believe the taxes here are also a lot less. Now, since we're location independent with our, with our online business, we can live wherever we want. So we don't have to live in an expensive place. So those are like two of the, I would say, like logical reasons why a lot of people live down here and retire down here especially, is because it's inexpensive and the climate is great. Yeah, during the summertime, it's a little bit hot. Uh, but for the rest of the year, it's it's really really nice. Now the third reason. Let's think. Let's all right. Let's think about a scenario here. Say you find an old Mustang that's kind of like beat up. It's like dented. The brakes are shot. The shocks are shot as well. And you see this like old Mustang. And then you look at a picture of like a restored Mustang from like the same year. Say it's like 1965 or something like that, right? And you're like, wow, that, 19, that restored 1965 Mustang, that looks awesome. And then that old shitty one, it doesn't really look that good right now. But it has potential. It has potential to look like that restored one. Living in a desert area like this, it looks really, like it doesn't really look that good right now. Like it's not lush, it's not green, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have the potential to look like that. 
I think it was just after we made a video talking that, you know, we, we made an offer on this land or we bought it. And some people started sending me videos about greening the desert. And they're really truly remarkable videos on YouTube where Jeff Lawton goes into these areas. Um, I, th oh, I forget the country that it was in. He basically took an area of land that was totally degraded. And it was just like, who would want to live there and do anything? And he turned it into this like permaculture based farm. And just a, like just a tremendous difference before and after. And I watched something like that and I was just like, I was totally blown away by it. I was just like amazed. And then there's these places southwest of Tucson where there's these huge like swales. Something that I'm going to be talking a lot about in the future are like swales or berms and basins. And that there's these huge swales that they made, I don't know, it was like probably at least 60 or 80 years ago. It's crazy because if you walk into this area where the swales are, you would have absolutely no idea that you're in the middle of the Sonoran Desert you'd have no idea because the trees are huge. There's like tall natural grass that's just growing. Like everything was just done naturally. All they did was move a lot of dirt in a certain place. And from these swales, it collected a lot of the, the rainwater and stuff that was coming down this, the side of this mountain. And it just created like this oasis, like in the middle of the desert. When I started watching stuff like that, it really got me it really got me inspired to start thinking, all right, so if we're gonna like settle down here and dig our roots down, can we not make this into an oasis? So as I've been doing more research and learning about permaculture and basically how all the different systems are integrated, um, like with the gray water and like all this different type of stuff, I really became excited and inspired rather than feeling like, well, we just live in a shitty area, there's nothing we can do. And the fact of the matter is there is so much that we can do and there's so much potential on this 40 acre lot for creating, like, I, 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 like I've been thinking of names to like call this, right? Because it's always cool to kind of have like a name. It could be called like the dry land oasis because that's what it is. We live in a dry land and we're looking to create like an oasis. But instead of moving to an area where like say for example in Hawaii, where it would be really easy, like relatively easy, I guess, to maybe start like a fruit farm and to really focus on permaculture and growing all, our, all of our own food. But you come to an area like this and you look and you're like, you can't do the same thing here. And maybe it's not gonna look exactly the same, but we can basically implement a lot of strategies in order to build this area up and to make it very plentiful and to make it very abundant. And you might think to yourself, how are you gonna do that, D-Man and HCH? How are you gonna do that? And it's like, well, I got a couple books and it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of effort to implement a lot of these strategies into the land and stuff. But it can certainly be done. Other people are doing it right now. There's a guy in Tucson, his name is Brad Lancaster and I have a couple of his books. And he's really been someone that I've watched a number of his videos, I've read both, both of his books, and just totally inspired that there is so much potential in an area like this. It's just that most people are not really aware of how to do it. And the thing is, up until recently, I really didn't know either. And so it's something that I really want to, you know, focus this channel on, is like really building this up and making it just like an epic place to be. I want people to be able to visit and they're gonna be driving down the road that we live on and like they'll be looking around like whatever and then when they pull down the driveway to come up to you know where our tiny houses or future buildings are gonna be I want them to be shocked and in awe of the difference so it's like taking that old shitty Mustang making it brand new again and like any restoration project it takes a lot of time so you might have to come back in five years to see you know how much things have changed you know things aren't going to change massively in like a year but five years from now ten years from now it could be wildly different that's something that i'm really excited for and this is why i love youtube because you can share this stuff and you can inspire people give them more knowledge so that they can take you know action in order to improve the environment and improve their um, improve their community and, and improve their health by maybe growing more of their own food that they're gonna eat like all that type of stuff but that's why we want to live in this area um, to basically show people what what you can do that you can live in a desert community and you can still create like an abundant food forest 
or an amazing, or you can create like an amazing garden. And you don't have to do it in a way that is destructive to the environment. You can work with the environment, like synergistically. So right now, obviously it doesn't look great, but I'm really excited for what's to come and what we're gonna be doing and building and creating out here. Like I think it's gonna be really epic. It, like this is gonna be huge. It's much more than just the tiny house. Like the tiny house is a small piece of the puzzle, right? But there's just so much more potential out here. And it's been interesting to hear some of the comments that people live. They're like, I would never want to live in a place like that. And it's like, come back in five years, you might really want to actually live out here. It's actually really, really beautiful. We're surrounded by so many mountains. Like, I just love looking at the mountains and like, I, I just love this area. All right, I'm gonna get inside, have some dinner, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon, peace.